This is Texans TV. Texans Extra Points is sponsored by Community Coffee, Strong as Our Roots, by Reliant, the official energy provider of the Houston Texans, and by your Houston area Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. And by Emma G, the official business bank of the Houston Texans. We're glad you're with us here on Texans Extra Points. My name is Drew Doherty, and this is going to be a very fun show because we've got D.P. Sidhu of HoustonTexans.com, Texans Radio, Texans TV with us. We also got John Harris, radio sideline reporter and jazzy hands aficionado. <laughs> we've got a lot to discuss, you guys. Y'all ready? Yeah. So ready. Ready for wins. Ready for wins yeah, with Z's. Ready. What about you? Wins with Z's. Absolutely. Who doesn't like wins? Uh, I, with Z's. I love wins. Yeah, with Z's. Yeah, I know. Hey, we got to get into the offense, but first we got to get into quick hits. So we want you to remember later in the show, we've got keys to a Texans victory. We've also got Texans to watch against the New Orleans Saints who come to town on Sunday here at noon, NRG Stadium. And we've got a one on one with Titus Howard, offensive lineman. Plus, John Harris has a telestrator breaking down a Jonathan. Grenard setting of the edge, but let's set the table and let's talk offense and let's begin with a little call your shot Texans extra point style CJ Stroud on Sunday against the Saints will score more touchdowns. I think red zone just a huge area of improvement that the team's been wanting to focus on. CJ Stroud has been hard on himself every single week and I felt like last week uh, we sort of saw the pinnacle of it. Four trips to the red zone that ended up in field goals. They had that one touchdown drive in the second half and I think that what we saw from him in the second half he's going to build on it because he does not like to get down there that close and settle for a field goal. So I think more touchdowns out of CJ Stroud. Yeah you know on Wednesday when he spoke with the media he kind of joked well what, what did I learn about myself? I learn I need to take more time off the clock late but what, <laughs> also that. what does the perfectionist CJ Stroud what's he gonna do call your shot I told you that I thought man uh, of course I said that to Mark too he scored too early yep. well you know you score when you can in the NFL there's no question uh, I think he's gonna have a triple digit QBR I think his quarterback rate is gonna be up in 100 which I don't know if that encompasses how many touchdowns, but I do think it's going to be efficiency throwing the football. I do think they're going to go back to some of the things that they did in the first four weeks. The Falcons did a really nice job of taking some of those things away. But I think if you can run the ball a little bit better, I think you'll get some of those things back. And if you're not going to have Tank Dell, whether you're going to have him or not, you're going to be able to get those routes in the middle of the field if you run the ball a little bit better. I think that's where CJ has been very, very good this week. So I'm going to say... QBR 100 plus. I like that. And points, efficiency, cleanliness, those are all factors that he's been pretty good at putting them all together. That's going to make that number rise. Okay. How has the offense gone from 11 sacks allowed in the first two games to goose eggs in each of the last three games, which that's a franchise record? What's happened? I think everybody up front has done their job. I mean, now the Atlanta Falcons game, you got back Laramie Tunsil, you played Titus Howard over at guard, and they, in pass protection, did a really nice job. Uh, the Saints, the Falcons also got smart too. They're like, we don't know if we're going to be able to get there because the Falcons don't have a ton of pass rushers. So a lot of times what they did was they rushed three and dropped eight and said, okay, CJ, throw it into a tight spot. That's really difficult for any quarterback of any age to do. So that's one of the things the Falcons did. They didn't bring a lot of pressure because what CJ had done after week one, he started adapting to the pressure. He then started beating and the Falcons said, no, 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 we're going to roll this back. We're going to send three, we're going to send four. Now, they still picked it up, and the running back still did a good job of picking those things up. But I think that was a decent part of it. But the offensive line playing together, finally, for the first time, I thought they looked pretty good with the protection. Yeah, and he talks about what the Falcons did to adjust, bringing those guys back more, you know, out of the box. That should goose the run game a little bit, right? I mean, is the dam going to break sometime soon with Damian Pearson coming? I feel like we've been talking about this for the past few weeks, and I thought that during the touchdown drive against the Falcons, we saw a ton of Damian Pearson. He was excellent Pierce. on that drive. He yeah. was Excellent on that drive and if you could see more of that it's there D'Amico Ryan's talked about it too it's there they just feel like they're right there on the cusp of breaking through with the run game and I'm, I know that no one's more frustrated about it than Damian Pierce himself because we saw what he was able to do last year and this year the offensive lines playing together quarterback play is improved everything's improved that run game has just been slow to adapt but we've seen bursts of it here and there so uh, I'm with Johnny I think that you know we we've seen it improve week over week and I and I hope that on Sunday we see a lot more of Damian Pierce you know it's Instead of the battering ram, which he is, 
instead of him just seeing a linebacker and running at a guy, get him the ball in space. Now he can make somebody miss. Now he can decide to run somebody over. That to me was the biggest thing that came out of that final drive other than the great play that Schultz made and CJ made was throwing him the ball and getting the ball in space. Do a little bit more of that. And that then widens the field, forces the Saints to have to cover 53 and a half yards of the field. That's tough. Yeah, still very early and there's still plenty of time for Damian Pierce to break out and have a big, big season. Okay, still plenty of time in Texans extra points, but we're going to go to break and not before we pitch this one to Titus Howard, offensive lineman. I got to go one on one with him. Titus Howard, offensive lineman for the Houston Texans joins us now. Titus, always great to be with you. First game back was last week. What was it like being back in there in that offense, mixing it up? You know, the offense is not a hard offense to kind of learn, just you gotta go out there and play fast. And I think, uh, you know, me doing the, all the stuff I did to get back kind of helped me out when I got back. So it was pretty smooth. Yeah, and for the third straight week, the, the offensive line, the offense as a whole, does not allow a sack. That's never happened in franchise history. That's the first time. And there have been some pretty good offensive lines around here. How has that happened? I mean, it starts with the QB. You know, he's getting the ball out pretty fast. And I think all those guys, you know, take pride in, you know, protecting CJ. You know, guys respect him a lot. It's yeah. tough to give up a sack, you know, because you. You got a quarterback that's back there doing the things he's doing, you know. So yeah, the guys take pride in, you know, not, you know, giving up quarterback hits and sacks and stuff like that. So as we continue to do that, you know, it's goals, you know, it's motivating to see that we're the first group to uh, do that. That last drive looked like the run game started to get going. Can that carry over into, you know, this week and beyond? Yeah, definitely can carry on. We, it's just uh, doing the little things. Whenever we go out there and we do everything we're supposed to do, I mean, the run, the run the gaps be wide open, DP running, he's on the safety. Uh, but, you know, as a collective whole for the offense to work and for this run game to work in this offense, everybody got to be on their P's and Q's. And if we keep on, you know, steadily improving each week, I think we can get this thing going because, I mean, DP special. And we, if we block the way we're supposed to block, he's going to make something happen every time. You got a lot of pieces in there. What stands out to you when you look at that, that New Orleans front? Uh, probably the number one thing is how hard they play. Those guys are relentless. Uh, it was Grandison, Brian Brees, Cam Jordan with Saunders. You know, all those guys, they playing hard. They take pride in, you know, you know, being a, a dominant front four and front seven because Demario Davis, I mean, the, the linebacker has been a good player for a long time. And if you listen to him talk, he take pride in, you know, the defense and stuff like that. So those guys play hard. You know, we play hard up front. So I think it's going to be a great matchup. It's really exciting stuff, Titus. Appreciate the time. Best of luck against the Saints, and best of luck the rest of the way. Yes, sir. Thank you. Brian in a short shotgun gets the snap. Has time. Looking. Hoyer's got to get rid of it. Hoyer dancing around. Hoyer throws to the right. It's Griffin at the five. Griffin to the end zone. Touchdown. Ten-yard touchdown pass from Brian Hoyer to Ryan Griffin. It's not too often you see a Brian Hoyer to Ryan Griffin highlight on this show, but we just gave it to you because those two linked up back in 2015 when the Texans took care of the Saints in the regular season in this building last time they played here. So that was a dominating Texans win. Drew, DP, John, DP, let's talk about this. <laughs> Who's your unsung defender of the season so far? Oh, that's a good one. I like this question. Actually, we interviewed uh, Blake Cashman on uh, yes. Texans Huddle earlier this week, and cash I money, feel like uh, records, right? Cash Money Records, Cash Money Entertainment, there are not enough nicknames Cash for him. Cash Me Outside Girl. Cash Me Outside, he's been phenomenal this year. Just in getting around the ball, he fits in so well in this defense. The Robert Sala defense that he didn't know was going to be the defense when he, when he was traded here over a year ago, yeah. but he has fit in so nicely and he's playing instinctively. He's around the ball and we saw it last week. He had a nice quarterback hit on Desmond Ritter. Mm -hmm. I think that we are not talking enough about him. There have been a lot of injuries to the linebacker group and whenever there is an injury, we see Blake Cashman step up and He step can be in. sticky in coverage especially on wide receivers, which is not something you normally see with inside linebackers like him. Who's your unsung defender? I mean, how unsung do you want me to go here? Because I think you can make a case for Steven Nelson. Yeah. Nobody's really talking sure. about Steven Nelson. Sure. I mean, he's sure. been fantastic. He's been playing really at a, at, a, at a Pro Bowl level this early in the season. I mean, unfortunately, Drake London's 6'5". Yeah. Um, he was unable. I mean, he had his hands on the ball, but L London's got vice grips for hands. If we want to go subterranean unsung, I'm going Khalil Davis. Will Davis has come in and done some really good things for this defensive line. He forced a fumble the other day at a TFL. 
he is always around the ball. He doesn't get but, you know, 20 snaps a game, 20 to 25. But when he's in the game, like Cashman, he's doing good things up front where they really have needed some help along the way with some injuries and some guys moving around. Khalil Davis, if you want to go really unsung, I would say him. I'd say Steven Nelson is just not getting the credit he deserves for being as great as he is this year, though. Excellent choices all. I like them. I approve. How about some over-under? We like over-under here. So let me give you a little stat. Saints, they're allowing 3.4 sacks per game this year. So over-under. Texans going to get 3.5 over-under. What do you say? I mean, I always go over with these sort of questions. I love picking the over, but I also think last week this pass rush was not getting enough pressure on the quarterback, and I think they were not happy about it. John Grenard after the game was really upset yeah. about it because that's that's something they were doing really well early on in the season. So I think that's something they're going to fix heading into this week. And I think they want to put pressure on, on, on Derek Carr because he's known to throw a few interceptions now and then. So I think they want to make things uncomfortable for him. And I think this pass rest between him and Will Anderson, uh, th they're going to get some sacks. On All Sunday. right, she's taking the over. How about you? Was that forcing me to take the under? No. no. Jinx. I want to say over. Okay. But I'm at a motive. I'll believe it when I see it. Okay. They're getting some hits on the quarterback. Uh, Blake Cashman's hit was a beautiful blitz um, that came off of that. But Desmond Ritter's getting rid of the football. If Derek Carr's going to hold the football, it's an over. There's no doubt. But if Derek Carr's getting the ball out of his hands pretty quickly, it, you're never going to get to three sacks because the ball's going to come out hot. They know that there are some ample pass rushers over here. But I think they're going to have to mix some stuff up, bring some of the blitz. One of the things Desmond Ritter did to kind of calm all that down was his cadence. He got them to jump four times in the first half. So that kind of slowed down some of the blitzes and where they were coming from. I'm going to go I'm going to go over because I want it to be over, and I can't fight with my heart in my head. All right. And speaking of cadence, <laughs> uh, my son's eight-year-old flag football team, they, they flipped the cadence the other night, and they got some yeah. offsides. Ooh, so nice. That was pretty fun. Go That's neither here nor there, though. So let's get back <laughs> to Texans football. Okay. Um, what's something, besides getting the quarterback and besides getting sacks, what's something you'd like to see the Texans defense do a little bit better, improve upon? I still think tackling has got to improve a little bit. Um, I also think the other thing is to be more aware in zone coverage of receivers. A lot of times when they're in zone coverage, you see the underneath defenders that are looking at the quarterback, which you obviously have to have your eyes on a quarterback, but you got to know what routes they're running behind you. Um, the throw to London that set them up for a field goal, set the Falcons up last week for a field goal, there were four guys in that area, but they all had their eyes at the quarterback, and London just kind of found that, that spot, and nobody really looked back to kind of find where he was and Ritter was able to find him. So in zone coverage, I want to see eyes find receivers and then glue to those receivers and make those throws hard for Derek Carr this weekend. All right, we got to get to Texans to watch after the break. But before we do, we've got Setting the Edge 101 by Jonathan Grenard. This guy, John, breaks it all down in this week's version of the Telestrator. Texas run defense was much improved in Atlanta. Why? Well, when you talk to D'Amico Ryans and defensive players, they use three words, setting the edge. What exactly is setting the edge? Well, let's go to the Telestrator. Presented by BMW, you're going to find out because this guy right here, John Grenard, shows exactly how to do it. He puts on a clinic right here against the Falcons. Now, the Falcons are going to run a lead zone, so they're going to take the fullback here and put him into fullback position. And it's just a zone play to the left, and they're in 22 personnel, so two backs, one, two, two tight ends right there and right there. This is a run set. Texans knew it. As soon as they snap off the ball, John Grenard snapped into Jake Matthews. So they're going to run zone play here, going all this direction, but lead with the fullback. But that becomes irrelevant because this right here. John Grenard violently sets an edge by taking Jake Matthews and driving him back three yards. This play starts at the 10, y'all. It starts right here. Watch where this mosh pit of Grenard and Matthews ends up. Three yards deep in the backfield. Now, you don't always have to get somebody that deep when you're setting the edge. It just so happens on this one that he did that. What does that do? Look at the domino effect here. Keith Smith, who is supposed to block Cashman, can't get to Cashman. Bajan, who is supposed to follow Keith Smith, runs right into it. There's Grenard with three Falcons and one with the ball. Grenard just drove Matthews back, continued to drive him back. And then he's able to slow Bajan enough up. Cashman's there, Will Anderson's there, and you get a tackle for a loss in the first play of the game. That, my friends, is setting the edge like a maniac. If our edge players do that for the rest of this year, including against the Saints on Sunday, this run defense is going to be one of the better ones we've seen. But that has to continue.
Breeze talking to his teammates at the line. Gets the snap. Breeze with a little play fake. Here comes Watt. Watt with a sack. Back at the 15-yard line. His second of the game. Oh, yeah. J.J. Watt making Drew Breeze's day a lot longer than he would have liked. That was 2015. J.J. Watt's first sack as a mm. pro in 2011 came at the Superdome against Drew Brees, D.P. Sidhu, John Harris. Friends, let's talk about these Saints. They're 3-2, and two, fresh off a 34 nothing whitewashing on the road in Foxborough against the Patriots. So, as Mark Vandermeer would say, they're kind of fat, fat and happy. Fat and happy, they're just they're like vulnerable. he likes them. <laughs> what have you seen out of Derek Carr so far? <laughs> uh, I think Derek Carr has improved the last few weeks. I think Alvin Kamara return has really helped him and I think that one season the run game it just really is going to open up things for Derek Carr in the passing game I think that you know four touchdowns two interceptions we've seen him a little bit cleaner and protect the ball a little bit better these last few weeks but I think that offense is clicking with the run game so uh, I don't know if every game is going to end 34 to nothing certainly hope that this week's game is not going to end like that for the Saints I think that they probably are feeling very confident uh, with themselves they've got a fantastic defense and I think that's really helped them along as well but I think Derek Carr is still Derek Carr like he's still going to perhaps hold on to the ball too long and that's something where D'Amico Ryan's defense can really flourish. Derek Carr, Clements High, John Harris, Lamar Consolidated. So let's talk some Fort right. Bend County. Uh, <laughs> what do you think of what Derek Carr has been able to do? I think he's he's played pretty well. Now as I said earlier he will hold the ball. DP alluded to that as well. He will hold the ball a little bit. Um, it sometimes comes out depending on what the game plan says but he's also dealing with a, a shoulder sprain. Um, a couple of weeks ago, there was a thought of, well, maybe he's not going to play in this game. But he did, and he's played ever since. Now, the Saints offense didn't have to do much against the Patriots because the Patriots just coughed it up. Uh, Tyron Matthews started the game with a pick six, and that is what worries me is the Saints defense. Very active. Tyron Matthew, they get Marcus May back. There are guys that have played together on that side of the ball for a long time. And then you throw in Brian Brzee, who in our preseason game was absolutely dominant against everybody, not just the backups. I'm talking first line starters. Shaq Mason had trouble with him. Brian Brzee is a guy number 90 to keep an eye on in this game. Could be very big for the Saints. Yeah, back in the pre-draft process, there were a lot of really smart draft Knicks, personnel people who had him being drafted here to the Texans. That's definitely going to be a guy to keep your eyes on. And, oh, he's got Cam Jordan out there who might one day wind up in Canton. He's a pretty darn good player playing with him. Okay, we got to get into Texans to watch against the Saints. Who are you going with? I'm going to Henry Toa Toa. All right. Uh, last week, you could see him take another step forward in leading the defense, and I thought he was fantastic. Tackling is not always 100%. It's not always an A+. Plus, but the way he gets to the football, how smart he is, how he leads this uh, defense, I think Henry Toa Toa is going to be a factor not only on Sunday but for the rest of the year. I love watching him play. Tackling's still got to improve, and hopefully they play with that juice they played with against the Steelers right here, and they do it against the Saints as That's well. That's a good choice. Alvin Kamara is going to be in his area quite Absolutely. a bit. All right, who are you going with? I'm going to go offense. I'm going to go John Mechie. I oh, think yeah. with the concussion protocol that Tank Dell's in, you need your receivers to step up. And we've start, started to see a little bit more Mechie in recent weeks. Last week, 20 yards, two catches. I love it when he catches the ball. I mean, he seems like you see a, a glimpse of what he could be. And I'm, I'm really, maybe this is more personally, we've all seen what he's gone yeah. through, we're rooting for him. But, you know, CJ Stroud, Stroud talked about it this week, too, that he sort of carries himself with a swagger. Um, you know, he has that confidence back. And I think that they want to get him the ball. Maybe this week's going to be his opportunity with a receiver group that's a little bit more depleted. Yeah, that's a good choice. And it's, it's still mind-blowing to me just that he's doing what he's doing considering Amazing. what he's been through the the last two years. All right, those are good choices. I'm going to go with Jimmy Ward, kind of along the same lines of what you chose Henry Toto to for because I think Alvin Kamara is going to be in the area quite a bit. They're going to need to be sure-handed when they're tackling and hey, let's come up with a fumble recovery. Let's come up with an interception or two or three or four or more. And let's go and do a keys to a victory. We got those coming up after the break. Stick with us. This is Texans Extra Points. Extra Points has been sponsored by Community Coffee, Strong as Our Roots, by Reliant, the official energy provider of the Houston Texans, and by Mattress Firm, the official sleep partner of the Houston Texans. Ah, uh, they're not booing, they're blueing. Alfred Blue with a touchdown. I, Alfred, if you're watching, 
Hope you're doing well. We miss you. <laughs> All is uh, good. That was a big day against the Saints for Blue in 2016. Actually, 2015. John Harris, DP Sidhu, let's wrap this up. Texans hosting the Saints. Noon kickoff here inside NRG Stadium. Two keys to a victory. What are they, John? Number one, Alvin Kamara. I don't think there's any secret how good he can be. Uh, he gets those option routes where he's matched up on linebacker or safety, um, and he it's just easy pickings. I mean, in the AFC championship, NFC championship game many, many years ago, he had like 11 catches in that game, and I f always fear that. I fear him having that 11-catch game uh, on Sunday against the Texans. And I think offensively, get the run game going early. I want you to throw the ball and be successful, but get the running game going early. Get that crowd feeling the way that it should. Get that offensive line moving forward. Get them some momentum. Get some physicality in them. And announce to them, you're going to be here all day in this way. And then you keep the defense off track. So those are my two. Those are good. DB? I'm going to say protect the ball. And I know that's something that the Texans have done well in recent weeks. I know we've all heard CJ Stroud five games, no interceptions. But it always worries me a little bit when you're going up against a defense that's got seven different players with an interception. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, and CJ talked about it after the game. He said, some of those throws that I had against the Falcons were near picks. The guy just dropped him. So he is very aware that some of those passes could have been picks as well. I think you continue to protect the ball. And then on the defensive side of the ball, limit those explosive plays. There were a number of plays over 20 yards last week that really had the Falcons marching down the field. So um, I think Johnny talked about it earlier. You got to swarm the ball. You got to tackle better, but just don't let them get those big explosive plays that can really change the tide of a game. Yeah, those are great, great ones. Uh, I know Cashman was saying that too in the aftermath of the loss. Too many explosive plays. And then, hey, Texans are plus five in turnover differential right now. So if they keep rolling that way, good things most likely going to happen. I'm going to go with this. Score a touchdown again on the first drive of the game. They've done that before this season they've scored early uh, over the last three weeks or so and then keep spreading the love they're talking about running the ball yes do that but keep getting that ball around to different receivers and making that defense stay honest you can't focus on just one guy hey appreciate you both joining us it's Thank always you. fun to be with you and we love it that you're watching us whether it's on YouTube whether it's on ABC 13 KTRK or all over the state of Texas Thank you so much. Come back and see us again. And until next time, go Texans. We'll see you.